For mercy have an expression. They say it takes three stones to boil a pot. And for them, those three pillars are first and foremost the cattle, then there's farming using the river flood, and farming with rainwater. If you take away any one of those three, the whole thing falls over. Mercy society collapses. Each year, the river bursts its banks, spilling floodwaters across the plains. Once the waters recede, farmers use this natural irrigation system to plant their sorghum and beans. This kind of floodplain farming takes place all along the Lower Omo River. And from here, it's very easy to see the direct relationship between the height of the flood and the amount of land that gets wet enough to farm during the dry season. The government is planning to create what it calls an artificial flood each wet season. It's promising to release water from the dam in a controlled and predictable way. We are addressing the problems of repeated flooding that we used to face uh, in the past years and many people in downstream communities used to die, lose their property as a result of this flooding. That will be out of the way now. But the tribesmen see that as a threat. Even the highest of floods helps water and replenish the more distant scrubland. The cattle herders rely on that to feed their animals during droughts. <laughs> The tribes worry that any attempt to control the river will knock out the foundation of their farming system. The government's own Environmental Protection Agency admits there may be problems, but insists it'll be a small price worth paying. We are going to stay put where we are. Our life has also to improve. This is the most benign of choices, but as I told you, there is no human impact that is not felt by other species or by other people. Even when you walk, you kill many insects. Further downstream live the Nyangatong. Like all the tribes, they struggle to feed a rising population from farmland and grazing that have been gradually shrinking. It's often brought neighbor into conflict with neighbor. None of the disputes between the tribes would be anywhere near as serious if it weren't for the presence of so many automatic weapons. Each of the tribes is heavily armed, and none more so than the Nyangatom, who get theirs from over the border inside South Sudan. Combined, there's enough military hardware here to start a civil war. After we arrive in the village of Kangatan, the elders gather for a meeting. They've heard rumors of a dam but nothing official. Our translator explains what we know. I'm introduced to Kai, the most senior elder in the village and their most respected spokesman. He's angry that the government hasn't consulted his people. The meeting comes to one chilling conclusion. The Nyangatom neither trust the government nor believe its promises of help. But change is coming, so can the tribes be a part of it? 
Oxford University academic Marco Bassi has been studying them for years. The issue is how to empower this community to face this change in a way that is, uh, in a way that they can manage, you know. How do you empower, you enable this community to deal with this change? And this is the will they be able to do that under the current circumstances? Under the current circumstances, they will not be able to do that. So what happens to them? What they said before, so simply they will die. The effects of the dam aren't limited to Ethiopia. The Omo River drains down into Lake Turkana, over the border, inside Kenya. This is an international issue. Lake Turkana is thought of as the cradle of mankind. The earliest evidence of human evolution was discovered here. Like all the tribes along the Omo Valley, the Turkana are cattle herders who've had to look for alternatives. Fishing is their last resort. <laughs> But lower rainfall is shrinking the lake and it's becoming increasingly salty. The water is barely drinkable now and the fishermen worry the dam will lower the lake even more, making it unfit for either humans or livestock. The scientist who discovered the earliest human fossils here is Dr. Richard Leakey. The impact of that dam is going to affect a huge number of people who have no voice, a huge number of people who will fight over the, 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 degree, the decreasing resources. Innocent people will be killed in conflict over those resources, and I don't believe it was necessary. Back from the lake shore, Takana women talk over the future. Where Dr. Leakey sees only crisis for these people, the Ethiopians see opportunity and progress. The Ethiopian government and the electricity corporation say they've done their studies, they've done the maths. Do you accept that a controlled release of, of the river waters will not seriously damage the ecology? I think it will damage the ecology. Now, I, I don't know what the Ethiopian government's uh, sources are, but I know in their EPA environmental um, studies they have come up with the notion that this is a minimal consequence. People I have talked to, scientists from various universities who know Ethiopia, who worked in Ethiopia, some who may have advised Ethiopia at one point or the other, say this is far from certain and the probability is that it will damage the ecosystem dramatically. And what I'm saying to Prime Minister Meles, with the greatest respect, your people did not do adequate study of the implications and what we're being fed is superficial and I believe in many cases simply wrong. Lick is a big name but I don't know what he based his arguments on. I don't think it is. I don't think he's right. My experts have also examined it. They have studied the environmental impact statements. They have visited the site and I know them, and I don't know you, and I trust them, and I don't care for what you say. While the debate rages between scientists and politicians, it's these tribes who will, ultimately, find out who is right. In a sense, it helps to think of a lake as a giant lung that expands each wet season, filling with water and spreading life amongst all of the communities. So by building a dam on the Omo River, the Ethiopian government is effectively placing their hands around the throats of everybody who lives and depends on these waters for their survival. It doesn't matter much what the Ethiopian government plans to do with that water. The fact is that the people here see the act of building the dam as something deeply threatening. But the dam is now beyond the point of no return. Change is coming.
The issue for the tribes is not if Ethiopia should be allowed to produce more electricity, but rather whether the Gibe 3 dam is going to impose a price that these people will be unable to bear. The speed and scale of the project is truly breathtaking. But so too are the consequences that the Ethiopian government has got it wrong. Lampadina.